What's up guys, the code Hodik is here and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to build three applications using vanilla JavaScript. I created these three applications for my students for exam and they had two hours to do these three tasks and they told me that they could not fit in the time. So the time was not enough and I decided to challenge myself and see if these three tasks can be accomplished in two hours because that was the time they had during the exam okay let's build this and let's see if i can actually build this in two hours okay no more like time spending and let's immediately have a look at the uh, specifications of what we need to actually do so i'm going to open that midterm file okay and here we have so these are just my rules. Don't cheat. Uh, use intern to find out something you might not remember. Example, adding event listener to button or making XHR request. But don't just copy and paste the whole application from internet. Write clean and reusable code. So I actually can use internet if I want. So here we have the first task, shapes and DOM. Okay, and we have to focus on object-oriented uh, programming okay so i'm gonna have a look at the recording yeah it's going okay anyway let's start uh, create class shape with three properties left top and color with method render which will return empty string also create a constructor which will accept left top and color and save in the class properties create two normal classes circle and square and radius property to the circle class and create a constructor with four arguments left top color and radius okay so let's continue uh, which must call the parent class constructor add width property to square class add constructor to square class also with left top color and width argument it must call the parent constructor just like you did for circle I think it is not it is not mentioned right here but these two classes circle and square should extend the shape so because this shape has left top uh, color and render methods and two normal classes circle and square and the render method basically for the uh, for the shape returns an empty string okay uh, also create a constructor okay let's continue circle square and radius property to the circle class and create constructor okay it makes sense so the circle and the square classes must extend the shape uh, it's not like written here, but it must extend because right here it must call the parent constructor just like you did for square. Okay, clear. Both classes must extend the shape class and override a render. Here it's written. Uh, override. I don't even remember this because I created this like a week ago. Um, like override render method which must return HTML string. HTML string must be a D with corresponding left and top coordinates, color and radius for circle class or width for square class. Okay, makes sense. Create board class with three properties, color, width and height, and two methods, H shape, which will accept a shape instance as an argument and add it inside an internal array. You can add this internal array in board class. Create a render method on board class, which will iterate over edit shapes and render them. Okay. Also create a constructor for board class, which will accept color with height as arguments and save it save in class properties. Width and height arguments must can be optional with default value of 500 and 300 respectively. If you did everything correctly and execute the following code, you should see the following picture in your browser. Okay, here we have it. So finally, we should execute the following code and we should see the following result. I think everything makes sense. So we have to create four classes, shape, circle, square, shape and uh, circle and square extend the shape with the properties. And we have to create board class, which will accept the shape instances, add inside internal array, and then render based on the properties what we, what we will give. Okay, let's immediately open VS Code right here and open browser as well. Here we have. And I'm going to create now, um, let's create a folder actually. So task one and inside the task one, I'm going to create index HTML and right there, I'm going to create app.js 
and let's generate skeleton inside index oops okay okay let's include now the script tag source equals app.js and we basically don't do anything right here in the DOM so the whole code must go inside app.js okay and let's have a look at the word file again so whenever we execute the following code this one so we should get the following output so we down below we need to execute the following close code but right here at the top we need to create the corresponding classes so I'm going to comment this for now and let's start with the class shape class shape which needs to have constructor and in the constructor we're gonna accept left top and color okay left top and color and we need to save this left equals left this top equals top and this color equals color let's do this cool now we need to also have render method which will return an empty string it's written like so okay after this we need to create a circle and square classes class circle which extends shape according to the specification add radius property to the circle class and create a constructor with four arguments left top color and radius so let's just copy this uh, create constructor right here okay and we accept these four arguments and we just need to first call which must call parent class constructor okay first call super and we pass left top and color and after this we save this radius equals radius so we have that and we need to also have the render method okay both classes must extend the shape class and override render method so let's do the render method right here which will return div according to what's written here okay htm must return html string uh, html string must be a d with corresponding left and top coordinates color and radius for circle class okay so it must be div let's create div and it needs to have the corresponding coordinates style inside the style i'm gonna give it uh well let's give position position absolute okay then we need to have left coordinate to be uh, this left so i'm going to change this into uh back ticks okay this should be this left uh pixel then we need to have uh top which will be this top pixel and we need to have also color so i'm going to make it background color to be this color okay i think and we need to give it also width width needs to be well because this is a circle and we have radius the width of the div should be two times radius okay and we need also border radius 50 percent so the width should be <coughs> this radius radius multiplied in two pixel and we need also border radius to be 50 percent okay here we have our huge div okay this looks good we're gonna have a look at this if it if it doesn't work we're gonna debug class um what's the second class uh square okay class square which also extends shape and it accepts additional argument which will be width so let's copy this constructor paste and change this into width and let's copy this render method as well and change a couple of things oops okay the style left and top coordinates background color is correct and width should be this width without multiplying on two 
uh, and the border radius also is not necessary okay cool after this we need to create board class with color and width and height and we need to add that add shape method there as well um, okay so let's create class board uh, which will accept in the constructor color width and height and we need to save of course this color equals color this width equals width this height equals height and we need add shape method which will accept instance of the shape and we need to add this in an internal array inside an internal array you can add this internal array in board class so we need that array as well uh, right here this shapes equals an empty array and then this shapes dot push the given shape and after this we need to create a render method on the board class which will iterate over edit shapes and render them so let's just create render method right here and the final result should look like this so we need to um the board does accept color width and height and by the way we need to give the default values for width and height uh, because we just need to give one parameter so the width by default should be 500 pixel height should be 300 pixel so we just give the color and then we need to render uh, the div so let's just create style equals width width should be this width pixel oops what's going on this width pixel height should be this height pixel background color should be this color okay so this is the opening div tag we need closing div tag right here okay width height and background color now let's also give position relative because inside we're gonna have position absolute elements position relative and inside we need to iterate over the shapes and just create content out of them so how to do that um, these shapes um, I'm gonna map basically each um, shape to its HTML so this shapes map we get the shape right here and just return shape render which will return which will render that shape basically and finally this will give me an array of uh, strings div elements and I'm gonna call join on that with empty string or we can also use new line so and this finally is the content so const content equals this and I'm gonna inject that content right here content so let's have a look so we have this left top color and we pass it right here left um, left top color well wait the left top color is on shape left top color and radius is on circle left top color and width is on square we pass all of that and we call render on board which will iterate over the shapes and render them let's save and let's have a look so let's open the browser right here uh, open where it's open with the live server uh, okay let's open it asks me which browser I want to open in here we have it so we don't see the output uh, which is which is bad but I think I know why we don't see because <clears throat> this doesn't uh, put this in the body so let's have a look in the specification so create render method which will iterate over it shapes and render them so whenever we have that content we should not return from the render method that should be uh, like we can make let let content equals this then content equals this and we need to put this in the body so document document body append specify the content so save and have a look in the browser 
refresh well it doesn't work inspect that and now let's start debugging so we don't have this uh, well because we we have commented this code my bad save that and now we see like this which is not good of course so we need to do it in a different way so what if we call append child so that probably accepts a node element so we're going to see an error exactly we're going to see an error so we can also do document body inner html equals content in this case and we see something okay we don't see everything what we expect but we see something let's have a look inside that cnd we have two divs now uh, with width 100 pixel but they don't have actually hate that's the reason so they are there but their hate is zero so let's scroll up and left top background color width this is uh, an example of square so for square we need to give the same hate hate equals this width pixel save that we still don't see it because it's right here probably it needs its background color i have a typo background background color here we have that cool let's scroll up and add that height on the circle that should be this radius multiplied on two save that uh, semicolon save that and where is that so it has pixel right here now what do i still have a typo in the background color i do i do have back ground color okay let's have a look so i think this is exactly what we expect uh right here so just compare okay i think we are done so the only thing i want to say is that uh we are just uh, setting everything in the inner html of the body which is good according to the task specification because there are no other elements in this but if there is uh there are other elements then we need to create an element um like this div should be an element and give the content as an inner html and then append element inside the document body okay i'm just gonna spend time on this how many means are passed 18 means okay let's move on to the next task scroll down <coughs> search in table in this task we have to implement search inside table make request on the following link and print receive data inside table so this is the endpoint this, that just returns the user's JSON, the JSON placeholder link. Display the following fields only, name, surname, name, username, email, and phone. Show search inputs above the table content but below the table header, just like it is displayed on the image. Okay, makes sense. Use bootstrap classes on tables and form inputs. When you type something inside one of the search input field and hit the enter or type something and click outside, trigger blur event, okay, makes sense. It should filter the table data based on that value. Okay, cool. So, <coughs> excuse me for that. <coughs> so, let's just create the second task. I'm going to create a second folder for that. Let's actually stop the live server right here and I'm going to create task 2 inside that task 2 let's create index html generate and we need to use bootstrap classes right so i'm going to create app.js as well and collapse the left side go to the index html and use the bootstrap classes so let's go to the browser get bootstrap open that Go to the documentation, scroll down. This is the CSS we want. So let's copy this and paste right here. Everything is there. And inside the app.js, we need to make request on the JSON placeholder link, which is right here. Uh, I just have this uh, window switcher on the left side, so that's why I'm looking there. If 
um, it opens the correct window. So this is the this is the JSON which we need to use. So let's just copy and go to the VS Code and we need to fetch that information. So I'm going to use fetch, specify that link right here. Then we get the response and that response uh, we need another promise response basically JSON and then inside then we have that result that should be basically users right so I'm going to create a function um, init table and pass that users there so this should be good let's create function init init table which will accept users and we need to draw the table so const table equals document create element table um, inside the table we need a table head and table body as well let's have a look in the specification again uh, okay we have to implement the following thing we need name username email and phone so let's just create table inner HTML equals so that should be T head uh, inside that let's close that T head we need um, TR there close that TR we need TH and we need basically four um, no 5th so let's duplicate this five times the first one will be just the number then we're gonna have name then username then we're gonna have email and phone so this is the th and we need second tier for the search inputs okay cool <coughs> excuse me th oops so we need that th duplicate this five times and we need inputs inside there that should be bootstrap input classes input uh, class will be form form control that should be like this by the way can i generate this table using html is it written that i should generate this using javascript okay I think it is not written again I'm saying that I don't remember what what I wrote there so it was several days ago a week ago or more so actually I can have this in the HTML but yeah it's almost done so I'm just gonna well I'm gonna duplicate that specific th four times uh, it should be four times in for the first one it should be empty th uh, th just like this okay and we need to put this table in the document body so document body append specify the table we can use append child as well and let's open now the following let's close the, all the other things and let's just open that HTML here we have we don't see the table let's have a look in the console do we have any errors no we don't have in the body we don't have that table why because no I don't have answer let's say that does it make request no it doesn't make request that top JS is not included okay so here we have that up JS refresh that oh, what happened that up JS is outside of the task 2 folder so a lot of small mistakes which takes some time and here we have it but it doesn't look like bootstrap classes are working isn't it refresh that uh, it is actually these are bootstrap classes but we need table class mm, yes exactly so on the table table class name equals table save that and here we have it this looks good uh, have a look in the design okay this is exactly what we want <clears throat> now let's uh, iterate over the users and render them so right here uh, we can map each user into tier object so users map we have user right here 
and we need to return uh, we need to return HTML so I'm gonna put parentheses right here and down below I'm gonna immediately write tr close of tr then we need td several tds um, we need index also in this map so I think this map callback accepts index as well right there so we need to display index plus one because the index will be zero for the first one it should be one and then we need other TDs like duplicate this few more times and here we need user dot name we need here user dot email uh, no username the second one is username then we have user dot email and we have user dot phone save that and that finally gives us an array of trs so const trs and what we can do is again call join on this <coughs> excuse me um what's going on with my throat so table inner html plus equals tiers join just like this within maybe new line so save that and have a look in the browser okay name is not name is not resolved what just happened open in a new i don't believe json placeholder doesn't work at this critical moment let's check if google is working i don't know bootstrap oh do i have an internet connection problem actually i do have so right now at the very moment i have internet connection problem it's back oh thanks god refresh that so here we have it so here we have all the users we want and let's let's implement the filtering so how to do that so in the init table we need to uh, select that uh, inputs and basically enable filter filtering so each input needs to need some identification in which field it must filter for example this must filter inside the name this inside the username email and password um, phone so let's add a couple of attributes right here so like for example data data field in which it must filter and that must be name so uh, data field for the second one will be username for the third one will be data field email and data field will be phone okay now i'm going to select uh, whenever we append the uh, the table i'm going to select inputs is um, basically table query selector all just like this uh, input and we need to add event listeners inputs uh, well let's iterate over the inputs inputs add event listener on um, well we need two event listeners one will be enter and second will, will be blar so let's add blar first add event listener blar um, and we need function right here which will accept event okay and we need uh, we need the second as well and we need to also identify which input this is so let's actually print the whole event object uh, okay let's have a look so save that something is yeah comma is missing save that and yeah my mistake so why i did so so inputs for each input and on each input i'm going to add an event listener input add event listener like so so when i when I trigger blur event, it's triggered, and here is my event.
and the event target will be that element on which the uh, event actually happened. So I'm going to create a function function filter table um, which will accept the field name and the value. Okay, so and it must iterate inside the table and filter the data. But for this, this needs the filter table needs access on the users and the table as well. Uh, well, instead, we can have that filter table inside that function init table. So I'm going to put that function inside it uh, to easily easily have access on that. <coughs> Excuse me once again. So input add event listener blur. Uh, okay, and I'm going to call right here filter table and pass the field name that should be event event target. Um, I want to get that data. Uh, I don't remember to be honest how to get that date data. I think it's data set target data data set. Let's just uh, let's just print that console.log console.log even target data set. Here we have it. It's yeah, it's data set. So we just need to pass data set field in that filter table as a field just like this. And the value should be event event target dot value. Okay, and that should actually filter the table. So we do this on blur and we need to do this on enter as well. So I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to add key up and the the event the enter key is basically a 13 if I remember correctly, but let's just print that. So enter here we have it and the key code is 13 exactly. So if the event key code equals 13 or um, why why is this striked? So the key code is deprecated. Maybe we can use which? No, this is also deprecated. How should I do this? Okay, I know it works. So let's just do it. Uh, we need to call that filter. Okay, cool. Um, I just paused for one minute. My throat is dying, I think. <coughs> so filter table, even target data set. Okay, that's good. Um, and basically that that should that should trigger filter table uh, whenever we want. So in the filter table, I'm going to write filter with the field and value. So let's just save this and type uh, like this. So it always display. Yeah, we don't need that. So Irving hit the enter filter inside the name with Irving. That's good. Um, if I just type something and click outside, it triggers that um, name. Hit the enter. It it works fine actually, as as we expect. As we expect. So now it's time to actually implement that. So how to do that? <clears throat> so we need to iterate over users, users, filter, uh, we have each user and we need to uh, return true or false. So how to do that? Uh, well, return if the user field, user, that given field, if that uh, contains that value. So if that includes value in this case we return true and we have new list of users and we can call directly map on that new list okay let's do map uh, where each user will be mapped to to tr just like we we are doing right here okay so maybe we need to create a reusable function for that so i think we need so function render users okay which will accept users and will return the following so i'm going to actually call render users 
render oops users here pass that users array and right here <coughs> excuse me right here we need that um, that should be returned right so return I have to pause again so uh, this will accept um, users and returns an array and I'm going to actually call join on that with a new line and that should be content and we can immediately append that content so this looks good however well we need we have that t head but we need also t body so why don't we create t body right here so the problem basically is that whenever we um, filter the table so we need to uh, leave this t t head as it is but change only t body area that's why we need to create t body right here uh, or we can do also like this uh, const t body equals document create element t body like so um, the table already has t head right there so inside table we can append t body and that content should become the part of t body so t body inner html equals render users we can delete that and we can even put that assigning to t body's inner html inside render users so we have that content here const content and we can write uh, t body inner html equals uh, content just like this so this looks good we can delete that this up and happens okay then we have when we call filter table we have that filtered users list users filter and that should be new users new users and we need to call render users and pass that um, why does it call it users users new users and that should be new users which will be passed right there so save that uh, that doesn't work I uh, don't know why so we iterate create join t bodies in your html is this let's see if there is t body inside the table the t body is there but it is empty uh, because we don't even call render users just like this save that and the users are rendered now let's enter Erwin for example or just er hit the enter and it actually filtered but it's yeah that's good uh, so we found a bug so it ignores the uh, it doesn't ignore the case so it searches for uppercase Erwin but if I just write lowercase it doesn't search so we need to consider this one as well even though this is not written by the way this is not written in the specification well we can leave this um, as it is right now uh, or if we just want to like make this working um, the user field um, to lowercase and if that includes the value to lowercase just like this so have a look in the browser type there er and it filters that um, let's search for how well that works uh, just delete everything and hit the enter in this case we see the whole users list let's search for bread hit the enter it works delete and click outside it triggers the blur and it also works um, Samantha hit the enter well this seems to be working so let's search for phone number paste and hit the enter okay 
8031 hit the enter and here we have it so this actually works so we have done the second task let's read the third one let's see what this actually is so task three quiz application okay this one seems to be a little bit complicated because it has 10 points well let's see maybe it's not that complex so you have been given quiz json which contains quiz data you have to create quiz application which will use the data from the json you have to make requests to the json file read the data and supply to the quiz application when you open the page this is what you should see so okay this is what we should see then what happens when you click the start quiz button the very first question should appear each question must be displayed in the following way okay makes sense when you reach to the end of the quiz answer all the questions the quiz has you should see your result page in this way when you click restart quiz it should open the very first question of the quiz okay so if i just click on the restart it should open the very first question and is that all i think that that is all um, so let's see that quiz json where it is so this is quiz json okay let's copy actually and go to our vs code and create um, task well it should be folder um, task 3 inside that task 3 create index html uh, create app js uh, I think we will need CSS as well because we need to display something in the center and just paste that quiz. Uh, okay, I can't paste, so let's actually copy, go into projects, task three, and paste right here. So in the VS Code, we have that quiz JSON and we can start. Open index HTML, generate that boilerplate code, and include inside the body up js include up css okay and let's start so let's let's actually stop the vs code server and restart it for this third application so where is that browser here we have it so i'm going to close this right click open with a live server and this is our task three now we need to make request on that quiz fetch that and display the following screen where is it okay the quiz math for beginners what is math for beginners let's have a look in the quiz json so the quiz name is math for beginners and we immediately have questions question one question two three four and five okay this looks good okay let's actually do this and first i'm going to make a request fetch to actually get that quiz.json file then we have response response json and then we have a uh, result that actually will be quiz object and we need to call init quiz uh, in it quiz and we pass that quiz so then we have function right here in it quiz which will accept that quiz so and that should actually already display the following following screen so we need also the way we are to display this information so we can display in the body uh, or we can create specific div for that so i'm going to create D for that with ID equals quiz and display it inside. So we need to select that. So const quiz equals document uh, get element by ID. We specify quiz. Uh, okay, we have that. Um, and we need to just display. So quiz, quiz inner html equals something so and that should be um that should be h3 in the button i think nothing else so let's create h3 or h1 i don't know this is probably h1 so h1 
and right here we need the quiz um, quiz quiz name to be displayed h1 and we need button uh, button that should be start quiz and we can give also that button ID start okay so let's have a look in the browser that that should already fetch the data so in the network refresh the quiz JSON it is it is fetched in the body we have that div that quiz quiz inner HTML equals this which doesn't work for some reason so why it does not work so what is this quiz so this quiz is probably selected correctly let's have a look right here okay so this is this should work again let's go fetch the quiz we have that uh, init quiz let's let's put the debugger right here if it comes so here we have the debugger we have that quiz object so it comes definitely here then quiz inner html equals the following inner html which should work save that well very strange hmm What mistake did I make? Inside that inner HTML, let's just type test. Get element by ID quiz. Oops. Oh my God. That is quiz and that is quiz as well. So that should be quiz element. Hmm. That's rework actually. So we need that to be something is not working quiz element that should be quiz element as well I think my keyboard does not work what just happened okay I'm just losing time quiz element Oh, it's just um, yeah here we have the result and let's go into app CSS and do some styling so for a quiz let's um, let's give it a background background color of white and by the way we need to give a uh, to body um, background background color something not white uh, according to the screen so the background is like gray so let's choose that color well, something like this we need a box sizing border box box sizing border box on everything let's have a look this looks good on the quiz we need some padding like 30 pixel for example Save that we need also some width, maybe 600 pixel. Save that it's too much. 400 pixel looks good, and we need to display this in the center as well. So, uh, the HTML and body, HTML and body needs to have height of um, 100% and we need on the body display uh, display display flex this is good we need um, justify content center and align items center as well and this is exactly what we want and on the quiz we need also text align center text align uh, center save that and this looks exactly what we are requested to do whenever we click where's the browser uh, okay it is here and whenever we click that start quiz it should um, it should change the view okay 
let's select that element document um, well we can select inside the quiz so quiz element query selector not all but query selector and we select start button const start button and we add an event listener start button add event listener click and whenever this happens we need to display the very first question so how to do that so let's talk about the uh, how should what kind of structure we're gonna have so in the quiz so one idea is just to delete that div we just created the button and everything and display overwrite the quiz element um, the second approach is to create um, separate divs for the first page separate for the second separate for the third and so on and for the final as well so that behind the other divs will be hidden and only one div will be displayed at a time so if we need to have a like a previous question functionality go go back to previous question which we don't have uh, so if we had that requirement in this case we needed to do it differently and we need to create like the multiple divs so that we just don't lose the previous div but in this case we have to uh, we can overwrite the whole quiz so in, in this case we can write just quiz element inner HTML equals to the first question and let's just see how we're going to display the first question so uh, let's have a look in the design so that should be um, h3 or h2 then we have the answers and we have the next button so we need to have h h i don't know h1 or h2 okay now right here we need to display the very first question so we can take the first question const first question equals uh, quiz questions let's open the quiz JSON quiz questions at zero quiz questions at zero and that is the first question and we need to display here first question dot um, what is title okay first question dot title we need also the answers so that should be inside divs oh, let's create a separate div for the answers okay which we're going to give class answers just like this and right here we need that answer so i can call a first question answers map uh, we are each can be mapped to uh, to an input type radio and the label so that is answer and each answer can be mapped as I mentioned to some HTML so let's just move this down and right here we need input type uh, radio uh, with the name to be answer no the question id because we shouldn't be able to check the multiple of radio so they should have the same uh, name and that should be the question id okay so that should be uh question uh yeah let's give it question um yeah question underscore and first question dot id this is good and we need to also display the text oops so let, let's enlarge this that's much better so and right here we need to display uh, first question no that should be answer dot um, title what is this answer dot answer okay answer dot answer this looks good and we need also button it should be button with uh, next okay so 
let's click that start quiz and it displays like this so that happens because we have text align center well this is what we should change probably and put this everything in a div um, okay just like this with the class of first page and probably in the CSS we need to give the text align center text align center to the first page only not the whole quiz in the HTML we don't have anything so this is good just click this looks okay however if we go again in app.js each answer must be a separate div so we can write div here and div closing tag here start quiz okay why do we have comma this is map and finally we need to call join on this with an empty string that's why we have commas there okay what happened hmm this is what happened start quiz and that's that looks good so have a look in the design so this is i think something similar uh yeah this looks good three four five and six here we have two th three four and five so what are the answers three four five and six so this is how it should be um one small thing probably right here we need maybe some uh the answers needs like the margin bottom or i can easily put br here so to make it easy start quiz that that looks good so when i tick on the labels i can only select one at a time okay and when i click next i should render the next uh and I should also detect if that answer was correct or not okay so how to do that well I'm going to uh, first of all have a like the variable of correct answers const correct answers equals zero and each div right here each element each answer um, has a flag if it's correct or not so let me think whenever we click the next button we should find out if that question is correct or not so one idea which comes to my mind is that we add inside the div we add an attribute data correct but in this case when we inspect the element we immediately can um, can see that if that element is correct or not right so when we do that we can inspect and see but because we have that information saved in the uh, JSON it doesn't make sense if we do that or not because anyone can have a look in the network open that quiz and right here it can understand which which question is actually uh, correct or not so this is just for um, for practice right so we need to do it as, as we actually want because we, we can think about the security right here because we have that correct flag true in the data which is returned from the beginning so let's do as easy as we can so and right here on the div I'm going to add a data attribute data uh, correct equals true or false so I'm going to add one or zero and that should be if answer correct is true that should be that should be one otherwise that should be zero save and have a look in the browser inspect data correct zero zero and right here it has one so now when we click the next we need to find the selected one 
Okay, we can also make this label and put that input type radio inside the label. So if I just change this into label, just like this, save and click on that. If I click on the text, it selects, which is good. However, that label needs to have display block. So let's go to the app CSS and inside answers, inside label, we need to give it display uh, display block. So let's just refresh this, start quiz, and here we have it. So this looks good. Select one of them, click the next. Okay, let's implement the next functionality. So I'm going to think a little bit and then do the best way how, how we can actually do. So I actually really like the object-oriented approach, so I may, may change this in an object-oriented way. So just if we follow, we just need to um, listen on the next button click. And we also need to have a you know, like the keep, keep track which index uh, quiz uh, question is displayed right now. Okay, so if I just create here quiz index, that is zero. So the first, um, first, no, it's, it should be question index, question index. So the first question is displayed right now. Then when we click the next button, it should display the next question. So on that quiz, when we click the start, so I'm just thinking. So on that quiz element, we can select the next, listen to its click event. And whenever this happens, we just render the next question. But for this, we need to have a render question method. So I'm going to create function render question, which will accept the whole quiz object and it should render that question. And right here, whenever start button click happens, we should call render question zero. That should be question index. Okay, which is zero. Let's uh, paste this right here. Okay, uh, the first question paste. That should not be first question called, that should be called question. We can display this on a separate lines as well, just like this. Looks good. Uh, we dis what? What's going on? Okay, so this should uh, still work like it was working before. It doesn't work. Zero of undefined. Uh, we just, yeah, we don't pass the quiz. Uh, we have access to that quiz, so probably we don't want. We want only index, and that should be questions index. Save that, and click start, and that works. Now I'm going to add an event listener, so const next button equals quiz element uh, query query selector we select button next button I'm going to do it easily on click equals we get an event right here obviously and we need to render next question so so the question index is zero so the zero question is rendered and the next question will be the next one actually. So that should be question, uh, question index, question index plus plus. Then we call render question 
and we pass question index. So let's see if that rendering logic works. So start quiz, next. Okay, we have assignment to constant variable. Okay, where is that? Uh, which line is that? Line 40. Okay, makes sense. It should be let question and correct answer should be also let. So start quiz. Next, 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 next. And finally, we're going to have an error because we are at the very end. Okay, so that looks good. And finally, we can write here if question index is greater than or equal to question or to quiz questions length we just don't do anything um, and we just display display result okay save that and return refresh so start quiz next 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 and finally we still have an error so if that quiz index yeah length minus one it should be like this save no it still doesn't work question index is greater than quiz questions length let's debug this okay so for the first one it's zero the questions uh, length is five continue click next next okay we're doing this in the start that's that's the mistake so that should be right here so let's see start next 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 I think one is missing that's why I had it like so okay okay and this is the last question five plus uh, seven let's see the last question exactly so that's the last question so this looks good now we need to take whether the answer is correct or not so on the next button click right here before we actually uh, render the next question we need to check if the answer is correct or not so we need to find inside the answers the radio which is checked so const um, const radios can we select using the pseudo property i don't remember so let's search for checked equals document query selector we specify right here uh, input type uh, radio so it, it can be input because we have only radio types there and which has checked does this select anything let's hit the bugger okay select click next let's have a look i'm going to zoom out slightly no it doesn't work so well it selected what we wanted okay cool so let's just print that checked and we need to take its parent element label and take whether it's correct or not right so that checked if checked exists if it doesn't exist we don't do anything basically it means that nothing is checked so if checked does not exist we just return don't do anything if it exists we get label const label equals checked parent node and we need to get that data correct so const correct equals label data set uh, data set dot correct okay if correct is true then at the top we have that correct answers so correct answers uh, correct answers plus plus so if that's that's makes sense and then 
we just trigger the next question so and finally we print uh, correct answers save and have a look in the browser start so 2 plus 2 is 5 for example so next uh, correct answers is it increased correct let's print that correct okay six next correct is well it's string it's string zero so we need to do like this if the correct equals to one with double equality maybe then it is correct otherwise it's it's not correct so let's see now it's false so three times six eighteen next now one question is correctly answered this is two two is correctly answered Let's say I made a mistake here, 2 is correctly answered, and finally I made a mistake. Uh, so we need to display a result, uh, and we have basically two answers correctly. So we can move this up right here as well. So the calculation looks good. Uh, if nothing is checked, that's something also should be considered. We don't do anything, we need to check something. Um, Okay, what happened right now? So when you click next, the question index is still increased. That's the bad thing. So we should move this down. So if that is that the check doesn't exist, uh, then we take that and then we increase and so. So let's have a look. Don't do anything. Select continue correct correct uh, 3 and 12 and finally I have four correct answers and we need to display the final page which is which is which is right here so math for beginners your score is 3 out of 5 so let's display this so I'm going to create also a separate function uh, out of that render question um, function function render result okay that sh doesn't need basically anything it should take the uh, quiz element and set its inner HTML to equal this we need h1 or h3 h h2 maybe so the, we need to display the quiz name that should be quiz quiz name h2 and we need to display also paragraph and inside that paragraph we need to display uh, the following text your score that should be basically your score is uh, something that is correct answers out of uh, the total number of questions like quiz questions length just like this and we need to also make this bold so let's create b tags right here and here as well okay this looks good and we need button as well button which will have a text restart quiz okay we just display that button and then we need to listen also um, const button equals uh, quiz element uh, query selector we specify button and button on click equals we have event and we need to basically display the very first question so we need to call render question pass their question index question index but we need to reset that question index question index should become uh, zero and correct answers should also become zero 
um, yeah, right. So we have both of them zero. Reset it right here. Save. And let's just display right here render result. So let's have a look. So we start. We select uh, 4, uh, 12, 2, 3, and 12. Okay, math for beginners, your score is 4 out of 5. We need to display this in the center. So I'm going to put this in a, in a div. Div with class uh, final, final page. Just like this. Let's go to the app CSS and for first page and final page. Okay, so then we just, yeah, let's go through with it. Four, 18, two, three, and mistake. So, Math for Beginners, your score is four out of five. If I just click that restart quiz, it starts from the beginning. Let's select everything, the first one. Okay, your score is two out of five, so this works. If I restart again, so this actually works according to the specification. So what we we are supposed to do. However, if I would have more time, I would definitely um, make this code much better. I don't like uh, writing a lot of functions. I generally prefer code to be more organized, like have an object oriented approach, have that reusable code and so on so this can definitely be done in a better way but yeah that was the main requirement so basically we did that um, i did it in about hour and 15 minutes okay so um that's that's my that's my time um okay so I'm going to now spend some time to make this um, in, a, in a way I generally want this. So to teach the best approaches, better approaches, what I think is the best. Uh, okay, I'm going to change this in an object-oriented approach. So, and first we need to have a class of quiz. So class quiz, which will have a constructor. In the constructor it will accept the um, element on which we're going to initialize the quiz and it will accept also the quiz data. So we accept quiz and data here. Okay, so this element equals element and this quiz quiz and data equals quiz data. So now we need to call this init quiz. So we call that init quiz and we need that function and we need to copy a couple of things from here so this init quiz basically is what does everything so i'm gonna move the code from there so this element inner html equals the following so and that should be this quiz data quiz name this actually let's call this quiz just quiz, not quiz data. So this quiz, quiz name, that's the first page. Okay, uh, and we need to listen to that button. Okay, so we select that button. Yeah, we just move this code right here. Uh, this element, a query selector, we select well, we can select just the button like we did for the others to be more consistent. We don't have any other button on the first page. So in this case, we can just select button. OK, so we have that button at event listener and we call render question uh, and pass the very first index. We need that variables as well. So this uh, question index equals zero this correct answers equals zero okay and now we need that render question so i'm going to move this inside that class which will accept 
the question index and just render the, this. Um, so these quiz questions index, we have that question. Uh, we display, we render that question. We can even create uh, a separate function for render answer. I think that will be helpful or render answers in general. So I'm gonna create uh, render answer. It's a little bit a messy situation right here. So I'm gonna create render answer, render answer. Um, which will accept answer and just render single answer and that will be the following label so return this and let's call this answer uh, but we need also the question ID so let's pass the question as well okay we need that uh, ID definitely so then right here we just call uh, render answer we need to pass the answer in the question okay this looks much better okay that is for render question we display the question information then we select the button this element query selector button we we'll listen on its um, then we we select all the input checked which is not correct we should select inside the, this element so there might be other input type checked in the dom so this element query selector input checked and more specifically it will be good to select under the answers so i went inside the quiz element Inside that answers Steve, I want to select input type checked, not the typed, but the property has checked. If it doesn't exist, just return. If it exists, we take the label and detect if it's, if it's correct or not. Let's remove the console log. Then we have this quiz questions length and we have render result. So this render answer, by the way, should be this render answer and this render question should be this render question okay looks looks better and we have render result as well which i'm going to also take out from here and create a separate method of the class render result which will take the quiz name this quiz quiz name these correct answers and this quiz questions length and right here we have this element and we need to also set this question index and this basically right here we need to call init init quiz once again so i'm going to call init init quiz no, the init quiz basically displays the very first page with the start button. We don't want that. Yeah, we need we need to do like this. Okay, this question index is zero, correct answer is zero, then we call this render question. Now, what we need to do is just select the question element, fetch the data, and create an instance of the quiz. So that should be new quiz pass the quiz element and quiz data and that should be all okay so if we have like a webpack or in or anything we can make this class as a reusable which will work on a specific div element and that is basically all so i i generally write in the following approach so i'm gonna save this and refresh in the browser so quiz index is not defined of course probably I missed this on a couple of places so let's see uh, the okay right here this question index save okay question index on line 21 on line 21 where it is right here 
this question index start it started select question index is not defined again that happens line on 56 um, right here and these correct answers also and this this render question and this question index also okay let's see next 18 2 10 14 okay render result this render result so we are almost finished in the in the approach i generally like so here we have it so that is correct restart let's select everything correctly 18 2 3 and 12 okay we have five out of five yeah we have we have just refactored our code in a way i generally prefer so it's it's more readable um, in my opinion i generally love the object oriented approach all right guys that's it and i hope you enjoyed it so leave a like leave a comment down below and if you're new to my channel just hit the subscribe button uh, for more videos like this okay thanks for watching and see you in the next time